welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया in this course we are focusing on the three types of samasas avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva currently we are spending time in understanding the theory of compounding and the process of compounding as stated in the paninian grammar we have studied the samartha theory which is at the base of the process of compounding we said that there are two types of samarthya vyapeksha as well as ekarthi bhava we studied the primary resources in the form of samartha nikha from the vyakarana mahabhashya composed by patanjali around 150 bce and through these sources we came to know that the word samartha can be explained in four ways two of them apply to vyapeksha and the remaining two to ekarthi bhava sambaddhartha samartha and samprekshitartha samartha are the explanation of vyapeksha where two or more words are seen together or are tied together in other words they are semantically related in the sentence and as far as ekarthi bhava is concerned sangatarth samarth and samsrishtarth samarth are the two other explanations where two units go together convey something together and also merge together into one unit that is what is ekarthi bhava we also studied the three features of ekarthi bhava namely aikapadya aikarthya and aikaswarya we said that aikarthya in the sequence comes first then aikapadya and then aikaswarya we also stated that the samartha theory is based on the karaka theory which is the base for the interrelation of padas and then we also said that for the process of compounding sentence is the input in other words the padas which make the sentence they become the input 
and the nominal root or the pratipadika becomes the output and then this pratipadika again becomes a pada and becomes a part of the sentence we also in brief studied the process of compounding as described in paninian grammar and also in the paninian grammatical tradition we stated that there is a laukika vigraha we stated that there is a concept of nitya samasa and contrasting it is the concept of samasa which is governed by the adhikara vibhasha we said that the anitya samasa corresponds to the reality where the samasa and the vigraha vakya both are available for the speakers to convey a particular meaning as far as nitya samasas are concerned the situation is slightly different and it is only the samasa or the compound which expresses a particular additional meaning additional with respect to the constituent meaning then we studied the process of compounding and we said that the laukika vigraha is then transformed into the alaukika vigraha after which the samasa saudnya takes place and therefore the pratipadika saudnya takes place and then the order of the words get decided and then samasanta pratyaya is applied and so on and so forth until the pratipadika is derived in this lecture we shall be studying certain aspects of this particular process in some little more detail first we look at the rules of compounding in paninian grammar the first and the foremost aspect is that of semantic conditioning this is stated by the sutra samarthaha padavidhi this is applied to all types of samasas be it avyayi bhava be it bahuvrihi or be it dvandva samartha padavidhi is a very basic semantic condition what it means is that an operation based on the pada as input should be capable of denoting the interrelated meaning and should denote it as one merged unit then we have already discussed about the two types of samarthya vyapeksha and ekarthi bhava the sutra and the principle stated therein in samartha padavidhi governs the entire process of compounding that is the base of the process of compounding this particular process is given a name samasa by the sutra prak kadarat samasaha ashtadhyayi 2.1.3 what it means is that before the word kadara which appears in 2.2.38 the final sutra of 2.2 every process described and prescribed by the sutra onwards is called samasa i repeat before the word kadara which appears in 2.2.38 the final sutra of 2.2 every process prescribed by this sutra onwards is called samasa this is an adhikara sutra and its scope is stated 
in the sutra itself that is 2.2.38. So we can say that Ashtadhyayi 2.1 and 2 namely the Prathama and Dvitiya Pada of the second Adhyaya contain sutras which prescribe compounding. This is a very important point to remember. Then there is a necessary condition which is stated in the Sutra 2.1.4 namely Saha Supa. The meaning of this Sutra is made complete with the continuation of the word Sup from 2.1.2 and then we have Sup Saha Supa as the general condition for the Samasa. We have been saying this that the Samasa takes place between two Subantas and it can never take place between a Subanta and a Tinganta or a Tinganta and another Tinganta as far as Sanskrit is concerned. Why this has not happened is because the speakers of Sanskrit have not used this process over a particular domain which is Tinganta and Tinganta. This is the simplest answer. So the meaning of this sutra can be rewritten as Subantam Samartham Subantena Samarthena Saha Samasyate. Any word ending in sup which is capable of expressing the interrelated meaning is compounded with any other word which ends in a sup and which is also capable of expressing the interrelated meaning. And then such an output is called samasa. This is the meaning of this particular sutra and this sutra thereby lays down the very basic, the very fundamental condition, necessary condition for the process of compounding which applies to Avyayi Bhava, Pahugrihi and Dvandva. What it says is that interrelated word which is a Subanta only is compounded with another Subanta only. What it means is that a Subanta can never be compounded with a Tinganta and a Tinganta can never be compounded with another Tinganta. Now this Sahasupa is also an Adhikara Sutra and its scope is up to 2.2.38 that is the entire Samasa section. This is also interpreted by the later Paninian grammatical tradition as Vidhi Sutra or the Prescription Sutra, as Samasa prescribing Sutra. Then what it means is that in general any interrelated Subanta can be compounded with any other interrelated Subanta. This interpretation is used by the tradition to provide rule justification for those compounds which are in use but, but which do not have explicit justification from the sutras of Panini. So we noted that the sutra Sahasupa primarily acts as a necessary condition for the process of compounding but the same sutra is also interpreted as a prescription rule, as a vidhi sutra. The samasa output thus generated by the vidhi interpretation of 2.1.4 is termed as Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa by the later Paninian grammatical tradition. And the example provided in the 
वैयाकरण सिद्धांत कौमुदी फॉर दिस पर्टिक्युलर इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द सूत्र इज पूर्व भूत भूतपूर्व आफ्टर दीज टू कंडीशन्स वेन द लौकिक विग्रह गेट्स ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड इन टू द अलौकिक विग्रह द समस सौज्ञ टेक्स प्लेस एंड देन द प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञ टेक्स प्लेस एंड देन ऑफकोर्स द पोजिशनिंग ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्युएंट्स इज ऑल्सो डिसाइडेड सो फर्स्ट पूर्व पद निर्धारण इज डिसाइडेड लेट एस लुक एट हाउ दिस इज डिसाइडेड सो पूर्व पद निर्धारण मीन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ द इनिशियल मेंबर ऑफ द कंपाउंड और समास विच अमंग्स द टू इंटर रिलेटेड वर्ड्स विल ऑक्युपाय the first position in the samasa and which one will occupy the other or the second or the final position of the compound or the samasa this is primarily decided by the sutra upasarjanam purvam the word which is upasarjana falls first it becomes the first member or the initial member of the compound it becomes purva pad so the subanta which is termed as upasarjana is determined as purva pad and the remaining is generally the uttara pad now the next question is how does the grammatical system determine which is an upasarjana how do you decide what is an upasarjana and what is not an upasarjana for that we need to study this particular sutra these are generic principles hence need to be studied when we study avyay bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva samasas so the sutra is prathama nirdishtam samase upasarjanam 1243 prathama nirdishtam samase upasarjanam what this sutra means is that the subanta which is mentioned in prathama in the samasa prescribing sutra is termed as upasarjana repeat the subanta which is mentioned in the first triplet or prathama vibhakti in the samasa prescribing sutra sutras prescribing samasas is termed as upasarjana and here is an example this is a sutra to 112 apapari bahiranchavah panchamya and this prescribes an avyayi bhava samasa and this sutra has got two padas apapari bahiranchavaha 1 and panchamya 2 now amongst these two apapari bahiranchavaha is mentioned in prathama vibhakti panchamya is mentioned in the tritiya vibhakti so now by the application of 1243 apapari bahiranchavaha also gets termed as upasarjana and then when the determine the question of determination of the purva pad arises this sutra upasarjanam purvam says that the upasarjana becomes the purva pad and so ap pari bahi bahis and anju they occupy the initial position in the samasa and the word ending in panchami occupies the second position or the final position in the 
of yai bhav samasa here are the examples so the subanta mentioned in apapari bahiran chavaha is termed upasarjana and then is placed as the initial member of that particular samasa so we have bahir gramat vrishto devaha or gramat bahir vrishto devaha you can place the word bahir at any position but because the word bahir is mentioned in prathama vibhakti in the sutra prescribing the samasa namely apapari bahiran chavaha panchamya now the subanta mention in prathama in this case is bahir and it is interrelated to the other subanta in the sentence so bahir is termed as upasarjana and then it is placed as the initial member of the samasa so when we have bahir gramat we then place the word bahir as the initial member of the samasa and so we'll say bahis plus su plus grama plus ngasi so even if we say gramat bahir or bahir gramat when we start the process of compounding the laukika vigraha that we follow is bahir gramat which gets transformed into bahis plus su and grama plus ngasi now the alaukika vigraha is the starting point of the derivation of samasa and in this the purva pada gets determined because of the term upasarjana which is defined in prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and so then we get the derived compound output in the form of bahir grama where bahis occupies the initial position of the samasa this is how purva pada nirdharana happens this is how determination of the initial position within the samasa happens and this is supported by the rule based system in the paninian grammar let us take another example the sutra is sankhya vamshyena ashtadhyayi 2.1.19 what this means is that an interrelated subanta denoting number is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika means a descendant i repeat an interrelated subanta denoting number sankhya is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika means descendant vamshyena now we notice that in this particular sutra sankhya vamshyena the subanta sankhya is mentioned in the prathama vibhakti vamshyena is mentioned in the tritiya vibhakti so any subanta which denotes number and which is interrelated to the descendant is termed as upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then by the sutra upasarjanam purvam that upasarjana will be placed as the initial member of the samasa in this case it is the subanta which denotes number let us take an example when the meaning to be conveyed is two sages of grammar the laukika vigraha is dvau muni vyakaranasya or muni dvau vyakaranasya we select the initial member of the compound on the basis of the 
term upasarjana which is applied to a subanta which denotes number in this case the word dvi is a pratipadika whose subanta is used and this dvi denotes number so this becomes upasarjana and therefore this becomes the initial member of the compound as dvi is sankhya and is interrelated to mani which is a vamshya or the descendant and then it is termed as upasarjana and will be placed as first member of the samasa so we have dvau muni as the so we have dvau muni as the laukika vigraha which gets transformed into an alaukika vigraha as dvi plus au plus muni plus au and then we get the finally derived compound output namely dvi muni this is an example of the avyayi bhava samasa let us take one more example supratina matrarthe this is 219 there are three padas in the sutra supratina and matrarthe the word sup is mentioned in prathama pratina is mentioned in tritiya and matrarthe is mentioned in saptami what this sutra means is an interrelated subanta which is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika is prati when the sense of quantity is denoted i repeat an interrelated subanta is compounded with another interrelated subanta whose pratipadika is prati when the sense of quantity is denoted in this sutra the word sup is mentioned in prathama vibhakti so any subanta which is interrelated to prati is termed as upasarjana and will be placed as the initial member of the samasa so if we have the meaning some quantity of vegetable asti atra kinchit shakam the sense of quantity is denoted by prati in the compound and it is interrelated to shaka vegetable so it is termed upasarjana and will be placed as first member of the samasa so if the laukika vigraha is asti atra kinchit shakam this gets transformed into shaka plus su plus prati plus su remember prati na was mentioned in tritiya in the samasa prescribing sutra so prati na matrarthe so now prati na occupies the second member position of the compound whereas shaka plus su this is a subanta it occupies the initial position of the compound and the finally derived output is shaka prati this is how purva pada nirdharana happens the key sutras over here are prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam the word which is mentioned in prathama in the prathama in the samasa prescribing sutra that is termed as upasarjana and then by the sutra upasarjanam purvam it is placed in the initial position of the samasa to summarize the process of compounding is rule based in paninian grammar starting at the cognitive level and coming down to the auditory level 
there are rules for undergoing the process of merging from separate entities, minutely detailing every aspect and providing systemic support. There are more such steps in the process which are rule-based which we shall study in the coming lectures. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.